And there are a host of companies that specifically handle like the logistics of like basically transporting the organ from one place to another viably. Mm -hmm. um, a really big player in this space would be like Transmedics, a publicly mm -hmm. traded company, um, who literally like they have a suite of private jets that will fly around and like pick up the organ from the donor and bring it back to the recipient. So this is all like, it's very, uh, let's say like heavily coordinated and the logistics are certainly not trivial. Mm -hmm. When, uh, th this is actually, uh, we were just talking about this, like, uh, before, before we started this conversation, I had this question about like, uh, right now putting an organ on ice is incredibly cheap. Yeah. Perfusing with oxygen is incredibly cheap. What's a value proposition to go for something like Cradle Labs, uh, potentially, or sorry, Until Labs, a uh, much more expensive protocol. And you mentioned that like, oh, there's this like, you'll need to rely on this like hype, incredibly expensive transport chain as like heavily. Yeah, I think that one of the nice things about doing something like organ vitrification mm -hmm. is that because it takes urgency out of the process, it just like relaxes all of these logistical constraints. So mm -hmm. for example, like I don't need to have a private jet to go get the organ mm -hmm. anymore. I also don't need to wake up a transplant surgeon at 2 a.m. because that's when the organ became available. No. We now have in our vision a process that can be much more, let's say, like disciplined about bringing the organ from the donor to the recipient. And this has a bunch of knock-on effects. Mm -hmm. So like one, for example, is that it could increase like testing. So if you look at the outcomes for living versus dead donors for kidneys, you look at like 10-year graph survival rates. So the 10-year graph survival rate in the U.S. for a kidney donor from a dead donor, for a kidney recipient from a dead donor, uh, is around 50%. From a living donor, so this would be like you get it from your brother or something like this, uh, it's about 60%. So literally just like the increase in basically like immune matching of getting it from a living donor, and it may also have some other logistical constraints there of like you can literally do it on the table that's next to the person. True. But there's like that much benefit to get just from basically like improved matching in the biological sense. If you look at the reference that I made previously about the fact that like in vitro fertilization for like of embryos is now you have a higher chance of getting a live birth from a cryopreserved embryo mm -hmm. than from basically a freshly implanted embryo. Mm -hmm. And the reason for this is, again, increased ability for testing. So we think of one, the cryopreservation process can lead to better outcomes for patients because we have this basically time that we have bought to be able to improve matching.